Ranger and the Lost City of Gold is the sequel to the first theatrical feature film from 1956. Released by United Artists two years later in 1958, this film would mark the final time that both Clayton Moore and Jay Silverheels would portray the Lone Ranger and Tonto together. Moore would actually make his final official appearance as the Lone Ranger one year later, teaming up with Lassie of all people in the television series episode titled Peace Patrol. Good girl, Lassie. The film begins by bringing any audience members left in the dark about the Lone Ranger and what he was all about up to speed. We are treated to an opening sequence that retells the origins of the Lone Ranger by way of a fun little ditty with the name of Hio Silver from Lenny Adelson and Les Baxter. It turns out a group of bandits known as the Hooded Raiders have been merciless in their long wave of attacks on honest citizens for the last three months. Seemingly without rhyme or reason, caravans are ambushed, leaving a trail of robbery and murder. When Tonto and the Lone Ranger come across the aftermath of the Hooded Raiders' latest attack, Silver, the Lone Ranger's stallion, gets quite skittish. What is it, big fella? Him act strange, Kimasami. Well, he's trying to tell us something. The two men discover there is a lone survivor from this attack, an infant child who they deliver to Padre Vincente Esteban at the local church. We also meet a pretty young Indian girl named Paviva, who would like to raise the child as her own, but wants the local town doctor, one James Rolfe, to examine the child first. It also turns out Paviva has a thing for the young doctor, who it turns out is keeping his own Indian heritage a secret from the townspeople. But why, James, why? Can you not be proud instead of ashamed that you were born an Indian? I'm not ashamed. I'm doing this for my people, for our people. Do not worry, James Rolfe. I will not speak your secret. One of the reasons the doctor is so secretive is because of the attitude of people like the local sheriff towards Indians. He has no respect for them and turns a blind eye to any abuse that they may face. In fact, the sheriff allows the hooded raiders and their civilian guises to kick the crap out of Tano before he can even retrieve the young doctor. Luckily, the doctor is able to stop them before Tonto is seriously hurt. But I'm afraid Tonto found out rather painfully what kind of a man our sheriff is. Uh, bruises on body go away, but the sheriff, um, sickness can't be fixed with medicine. 
Meanwhile, Lady About Town, Mrs. Frances Henderson, and her ruthless enforcer, Ross Brady, are the masterminds behind the Hooded Raiders. It turns out they have a very specific agenda, involving locating five separate medallions cut from a silver plaque that belong to various members of the local Indian tribe. When all the medallions are placed together, they will form a treasure map that tells the location of a lost city of gold. The Lone Ranger puts his skills as a master of disguise to great use and gets into the good graces of Henderson by posing as a gentleman bounty hunter by the name of Brett Reagan. Mr. Reagan, you're priceless. Not quite, ma'am, but I do have my price. Depends on the circumstances as to how much it is. Eventually, between the ranger's reconnaissance on Henderson and talking to Chief Tomachi of the local tribe, he and Tonto come to the conclusion that the Indians who have the silver medallions are all being targeted. Three men have already fallen, but Tonto and the Lone Ranger are determined to save the final two. However, while one of the final men is known to the chief, the other remains a mystery. The Lone Ranger and Tonto succeed in stopping the Hooded Raiders from killing the known medallion holder, though Brady still gets away with the fourth piece of the map. It actually turns out that the fifth and final piece of the map belongs to the young Doctor. The turning point for the Doctor is when the crooked Sheriff gets physical with Paviva while giving her a bunch of lip. Tonto is the one who stands up for her and kicks the fat Sheriff's ass. Why, look, you... You not touch her. Why? You have the tongue and the courage of the coyote. You speak much, but you say nothing. Unfortunately, the sheriff then shoots at Tonto from behind. Rolf luckily deflects the shot from doing any permanent damage. Tonto's head is certainly bloody, but he is alive and I assume grazed like every other dude who gets shot in a Lone Ranger television show. This life-changing event finally gives the doctor courage enough to reveal his true heritage to the entire town. Well, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you all something. I'm an Indian. The blood of Tomachi, chief of the tribe, runs through my veins. I'm his grandson. All these years I've masqueraded because I thought it was important. I thought it would make a difference. After what I've just witnessed, I know now I was wrong. The townspeople reject the sheriff, and Paviva is overjoyed. Things certainly seem to be looking up for James Rolfe, Paviva, and the young baby they plan on adopting. However, now that Ross Brady knows that the Doc has the final piece of the puzzle, leading to the City of Gold, he'll stop at nothing to obtain the medallion. Tonto practically fends off the entire hooded raider gang by himself, running out of bullets and eventually down to his last throwing knife, when the Lone Ranger shows up to finish the fight with Brady. Shot and wounded, Brady runs back to Henderson's place, where she shows her love by axing him in the back. However, the Lone Ranger is no fool and calls the She-Devil on her shenanigans. You had to do it so the city of gold would be yours alone. What? You know what I'm talking about, Mrs. Henderson. You told your last lie. With the killers and thieves brought to justice, Chief Tomachi's people can celebrate not only the return of the chief's grandson, James Rolfe, but the discovery of the hidden caverns of gold that will finance the young doctor's dream of a hospital for his people. For the final adventure of Moore's Lone Ranger and Silverheels Tonto, this was a pretty decent and competent film. Not as good as the first film from 1956, but there are certainly worse ways to exit a franchise. None of this would be possible were it not for Tonto and the Lone Ranger. Well, Silver! Away! Not quite, ma'am, but I do have my price. Depends on the circumstances as to how much it is. <laughs>